making natural plant forms the basis for her work. She uses electroforming and enameling to create unique organic pieces. With texture and color, she highlights the sensuousness of growing things, making us more aware of their fascinating interior and exterior structures. On this edition of Art Now, we'll look at the work of Melissa Huff. Welcome to Art Now, where we talk to artists whose work is part of our community. I'm Pat Salmon, and I'll be your host. Our guest today is Melissa Huff, a metal and enamel artist who creates unique jewelry through electroforming and enameling. In 1995, she earned a degree in metals from the University of Illinois. She has exhibited at the Aaron Faber Gallery in New York and the annual Sofa Show in Chicago. Her work has been seen at the Society of Arts and Crafts in Boston and the Kohler Art Space Gallery in Wisconsin, and is part of the permanent collections of the Racine Art Museum and the Enamel Arts Foundation. She recently served as a member of the Board of Directors of the Society of North American Goldsmiths, and she currently is a member of Illinois Artisans and the American Craft Council. Melissa, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, Pat. Great. And my first question is, uh, your first careers were in book publishing and in the music business managing artists. What turned you toward visual art and how did you decide to focus on jewelry? Well, it was quite a pathway, <laughs> quite a journey. <laughs> but back before those careers, mm -hmm. I actually, um, when I was in college, I became interested in photography. And that was like um, a first taste of the visual arts for me. Mm -hmm. And it just sort of planted a seed. And uh, then when I was um, working, I decided at some point to take art classes. And I discovered that you can learn to draw and you can learn some of these skills. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be born with them. Uh, that was very exciting to me. So I wanted to study more intensively. So at one point then, um, I was managing musicians and that was great fun. Mm -hmm. But I realized, oh, I'm spending a lot of time nurturing other people's creative lives maybe it's time to nurture my own. Mm -hmm. So at that point, um, I did decide to pursue uh, studies at the University of Illinois and started out actually in painting. Mm. But I took all kinds of classes um, across the board and gravitated towards 3D work. And when I found metals, I could do the 3D mm -hmm. and I could also, um, I discovered enameling, which enabled me to work with color. So that progressed and that's how I got where I am today. <laughs> that's great. Now the main, main inspiration for your art is nature, particularly plants. Uh, when did you first become interested in plant forms and what is their appeal to you? You know, um, I'd say very early on I, mm -hmm. I became interested. In fact, when I was studying metals, the very first project that I made mm -hmm. was based on a drawing. And I'd made a drawing that was, um, it was an abstract, but it looked like an organic form in kind of a protected space. Mm -hmm. And so my professor looked at that and he, and he said, you know, it, it kind of looks like a seed pod. Hmm. And if you wanted to work with that kind of thing, you might research electroforming because that's a really good process to deal with organic form. So I hightailed it over to the university greenhouses and asked permission to pick some seed pods. <laughs> And I did research electroforming, and uh, I pretty much was hooked. I mean, I certainly did other kinds of work yeah. while I was a student, but really the, sorry, really the organic form uh, was the mainstay. Right. That's and great. Okay, well, let's now take a look at some of your simpler pieces that center on one element. This first one is olive brown wisteria. Yes, and um, this is a very early piece. Um, and at that time, I was working with a real earthy palette, and I would create my own palette by mixing colors, which I still do. Um, but I would intentionally um, mix them and gray them down somewhat to get a real earthy palette. Mm -hmm. And this, this is a brooch, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, uh, 
The next piece is also a brooch called Leaf Curl, mm -hmm. and it's a kind of a grayed green palette. And this is an example of a, a real sensuous plant form. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to actually talk about why I why I'm attracted to plant forms. Sure. Because, um, and the sensuous quality is one. Uh, I think plant forms can be very sensuous, and I mean by that that they appeal to the senses um, uh, for aesthetic pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I do choose them for that, and the texture of them is also sensuous. People want to touch them. They also can e echo the human form, mm -hmm. and I like that because people then respond to plant forms, sometimes in a very visceral manner. Mm -hmm. um, they're also great for, they lend themselves to symbolism and metaphor. Right. And lastly, I use them because they evoke the growth processes of nature. And I, I really like to suggest that, to suggest a sense of development over time and to suggest patterns of growth. So those are all my reasons for right. choosing plant forms. Right. And uh, the, the next one, also leaf forms, uh, entitled Autumn. Uh, this was really about the color. I just wanted to deal with gradations. Right, I was going to mention the color is, is really striking on that. <laughs> um, yes, I tried to do gradual gradations of, from yellows to oranges in that. But it's also a good example of the patterning that I do. In this case, I... Um, I emphasized the pattern that was already there mm -hmm. in the leaf forms. Sometimes I create my own patterning, mm -hmm. uh, but in this case I was just emphasizing what was going on already. And then we can see this piece, Sophia, was also a very three-dimensional leaf, mm -hmm. but here I was going for a bit of an ethereal quality. Yeah. And that's why I chose the palette that I chose. Um, so it's a good example of how I'm not trying to be representational, particularly. Right. Right. I mean, you can tell in this case that that's a leaf. Um, although some pieces I have, people have no idea what the form really right. came from. Right. And I'm not trying to be ultra representational right. at all. Um, let's look at the next one. Okay, um, this is called Persephone. Mm -hmm. Also a leaf form, but in this case I added a, a second leaf, the little one at the top, and that's a kind of a precursor to the hybrid forms that we'll talk about later. Right. Also, I think this is a good example of how plant forms can be figural. Mm -hmm. And that's right. another reason why I, I, it relates to the human form, and uh, this one felt very figural to me. Right. Okay, now the next two include an addition of a fine silver pod. Uh, yes, um, that's something relatively new for me, but uh, what I've done, and this one is uh, called Chloe, the branch itself uh, is electroformed copper with enamel, but the flower-like form is fine silver, mm -hmm. and I make that using um, precious metal clay Oh, okay. called PMC. Mm -hmm. It's a clay that can be... Um, you can make a slip out of it, a slip like a ceramic slip. Okay. And I can paint it then on in layers. Oh, okay. On these three-dimensional yeah. forms, layer after layer after layer <laughs> until mm -hmm. it's thick enough. Yeah. Uh, then I burn out the original form. And this is another example of that called Nelly. And the acorn form was an acorn and it's now pure silver. Okay. So, um, and they're attached to the branches using electroforming. Ah. That's how okay. it's attached. Okay. Now the primary techniques you use to create your pieces are electroforming and enameling. Uh, could you explain a bit more about how you use these, these techniques? Sure. Um, let's start with electroforming. Okay. And here's my electroforming tank, um, which is a 15 gallon tank. And um, well, about 13 gallons of liquid in it. But electroforming is the use of electrodeposition to build up layers of metal on an object. Okay. Now it's very similar to plating, except that plating is usually very thin layers mm -hmm. and usually deposited on um, a metal surface. So it's mm -hmm. metal on okay. metal. Right. In this case, electroforming, it's depositing metal th more thickly mm -hmm. 
thick enough that it can exist on its own. Mm -hmm. And it's also depositing it on non-metallic surfaces. Mm -hmm. So in my case, what I'm doing, I'm using actual plant material, mm -hmm. or occasionally I'll use wax forms. Oh, okay. And, but in, in either case, I um, paint these forms with silver conductive paint. Mm -hmm. And then the object and chunks of copper are mm -hmm. hooked up in this bath, they're hooked up to an electrical source. Mm -hmm. So um, actually in that photo, along the central rod, there are wires, those are hanging to my pieces. And then the four large hooks are holding these large chunks of copper. Oh, okay. So when you run an electrical current through that bath, the copper is attracted to the silver paint and it travels through the bath mm. and deposits itself on right. the forms. And I just keep doing that until it's thick enough to exist on its own. Right. Th at that point, I burn out the original material. So I'm left with a three-dimensional hollow object. Right. And it's, it can be very large and yet quite wearable because copper that's deposited in this way uh, is, very, is not dense. Right. So it's lightweight. Right. So some of my brooches um, can be four to even close to five inches tall mm -hmm. and they're still quite wearable. So, um, the, and the other thing is that it lends itself, that kind of copper lends itself well to enameling. Ah, okay. Now the type of enameling that I do um, is a type of champlevé enameling. Okay. And champlevé literally means raised field. Mm, okay. So, um, but traditionally, um, the raised field or a raised pattern is made by etching the metal. And so you get these recesses into mm -hmm. which you deposit uh, or inlay enamel. Right. And with the electroforming, I've kind of flipped it and I use an additive process. And I, so I'll, I'll go through this and you'll see. Okay. On the upper left mm -hmm. are just the pods. Um, right. And the bottom form is a leaf and the top was star anise. Okay. And then in the, moving to the right, uh, they have been shellacked. I have to make them impervious to liquid. Mm -hmm. The star anise I have um, plumped up a little bit with wax because it's hard to deposit down into crevices. Ah, you can't okay. deposit evenly. So, gotcha. um, so that's ready for the bath. No, not yet. <laughs> we moved to the right. <laughs> okay. And there it is painted with pure silver. Ah, okay. It's actually uh, pure silver plus a binder. Okay. Then moving to the bottom left, I've now electroformed the form. So I've got okay. the copper form mm -hmm. and I've painted a resist. And here's my additive process. I'm going to then deposit more copper wherever mm. there's no resist. Gotcha. That gives me the raised copper. Right. So in the middle on the bottom, we've got the finished electroformed piece. It has raised patterning. Right. And it's burned out of the plant material, so it's now ready to enamel. Right. Uh, on the right, I have inlaid enamel into those recesses that I created. And it's almost done, except then I would etch it and uh, oxidize the copper a bit. Okay. So that's, um, that's how I chanlevé. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you have one other here where you show uh, your signature. Of course. So um, just relating to the enameling, um, in the background is a tray of these enamels that are light colored sand. Okay. And I do what's called a uh, wet pack. So I wet them down and pack them into these spaces with little tools. Mm. And in this case, I am signing the piece with acrylic enamels, oh, which okay. you can use like watercolor. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. Great. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get back to your work. And the next piece is combined more than one original plant material in a single piece. Yes. I call these my hybrids mm -hmm. because I do create my own forms using right. Um, parts of different plants. And this one called Iris Rising mm -hmm. is probably the most complex brooch that I've made mm -hmm. because it involves a, an iris pod and then a bulb-like form, um, two baby pods on the right, and a leaf form. Mm. And so what I had to do actually to make this mm -hmm. is I partially electroform each piece 
Oh, okay. And then I attach them with more electroforming and keep electroforming to get them thick enough. Okay. But they need to be started individually. And uh, okay. another example is called angel wings. Mm -hmm. And again, um, I would have done the central branch or stem mm -hmm. with, um, I think that's a lily pod, mm -hmm. and then these dimensional leaves I would mm -hmm. have started and then attached them so they're encasing and protecting right. the piece. Um, and I think this is another good example of how I'm not trying to be representational. I mean, right. you're not finding the colors and you're not finding forms quite like that. Right. Another example, spring lily, um, a lily pod at the top and at the bottom is a, it used to be a, a tulip bulb and another leaf form on the side. Another hybrid, this is called Lantern for Yoris. And um, I think this is a good example of the figural nature, mm -hmm. um, which I intended to get with this piece. Most of the time, I just make up these forms. Mm -hmm. And I made up this form too, but it was inspired by um, a 16th century manuscript okay. with um, botanical drawings by Joris Hufnagel. And so this is my tribute to Joris. Mm -hmm. And since my name is Huff and his is Hoofnagel, I have adopted him as my ancestor. Ah, <laughs> okay. You may not know that, but, <laughs> but I have. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and, then, um, and then one more of the hybrids. Uh, this one I, I added movement to because yes. the pod actually swings from the branch. Right. Yeah, so. Okay. <clears throat> Now let's look at a type of work that has almost become your signature, the mandala. Uh, these pieces are based on cross sections of roots or stems, which have circular patterns that allow you to have almost infinite variations. That's right. And um, I should say that I use the term mandala mm -hmm. because um, broadly it means um, it's a symbol of the universe mm -hmm. and even more broadly a symbol of wholeness. Mm -hmm. So I like, I like that and I do base it on cross sections of plant anatomy and I do, I do drawings mm -hmm. from those, uh, from plant anatomy books. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm not trying to be exact. Right, not literal. Not literal, exactly. Um, so I don't have identical replicas, but it is about revealing the inner cellular structure and which also speaks of how the plant gets nourishment. Mm -hmm. So I like all these connotations of the wholeness mm -hmm. and nurturing mm -hmm. and basically growth. And I think they also get to um, the elemental processes of life. Right. I, I think that the, the mandalas are, are somewhat mysterious. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Because you, yeah, okay, I'm glad you agree. Oh, yeah. Because you don't look at that and, and label it up. As right. something automatically. Right. right. Absolutely. You okay. Don't say, oh yeah, that's a cross section of <laughs> such and such. Right. Okay. Well, this first one is the core mandala. Yeah, core mandala. Um, I tried something a little different. Um, oh, let me back up and explain. Uh, earlier, mm -hmm. I was talking about the methods of Jean Levé, mm -hmm. and this would reflect the more traditional way of making Jean Levé. Okay. It is etched copper. Okay. But all the little dark lines, mm -hmm. even the ones you can barely see, those are copper. Mm, so okay. the surface of Jean Levé ends up being part enamel and part metal. Okay. And so I etched this one. And what I did is I intentionally um, underfilled some of those cavities when I was inlaying enamel. Mm -hmm. And then I stone it down to reveal the pattern and to make it smooth. But I've got, I still have some low points, and hmm. I wanted that so that I get some texture. Yes, yes. And I, I don't always do that, but I did that on core, core mandala. And let's see, the next one. Um, this is called root mandala. And this was the first one of these mandalas that I ever made. Hmm. Um, it does reflect that early earthy palette right. that I was talking about. Right. And so it's special to me because it was the first. Right. This one is called Orchid Mandala, mm -hmm. and I wanted this one to be rather jewel-like. Mm -hmm. Hence the colors I chose and the surface treatment. 
This one is called Bare Bones Mandala. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's rather special in the way I made it because in this case, I intentionally kept the enamel very thin. Mm. Okay. And so that even though I use opaque enamel, it functioned like a transparent. Right. So you can see some of the pink, uh, pinkish quality of the copper showing through and becoming mm -hmm. an important part of the palette. Right. And I also left the patterning to be that pinkish copper to contribute right. to that feel. Right. It's also a special piece because this is the one that, the, that was purchased by the Enamel Arts Foundation ah. for their collection. Okay. Another example, Sun Petal Mandala, mm -hmm. just a stoned surface. And another example, Poet's Mandala, you can see some of the copper patterning, again, where I kept the enamel thin. Right. And Iris Root Mandala, an early one. Um, again, a subdued kind of palette. And this one's a little different. This one is a little different. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, this one brings us full circle back to electroforming. Mm. So this is Lapis Lotus Mandala, but I did in fact use a lotus pod mm -hmm. and electroformed it. I first had to fill the cavities with wax mm -hmm. so that I could get a continuous surface. Okay. And then I was able to um, inlay these deep pools of enamel into mm -hmm. it. Um, so for me, it was some, somewhat of a contemplative piece. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and finally, you have created some one-of-a-kind necklaces that we're going to look at. I have, indeed. And I think all of these necklaces are examples of um, where I used multiples of the same type of pod within mm -hmm. the same piece. Mm -hmm. And I like that because then I get a sort of conversation going between mm -hmm. them. Right, <laughs> right. This one called Tango, two milkweed pods, mm -hmm. and I arranged them so they were kind of dancing with each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the conversation they're having. Then we have Triple Catalpa. Mm -hmm. I love the elegant form of the Catalpa pod. Yes. And I've used it on its own as a single pendant. Mm -hmm. And then I just thought, why not use three of them and mm -hmm. have them talk to each other? Yeah, that works well. Thank you. Uh, this one's called Tree Peonies. Mm -hmm. And these were tree peony pods from my garden, uh, which were difficult to electroform. But I wanted to do a piece that's um, it's actually fully adjustable. And you can, in this case, uh, change the relationship between the two pods oh, okay. in terms of how they hang. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that I like options. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, let's see. Then we come to Ella, which uh, I think this is the ultimate in multiple pods. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I used masses of eucalyptus pods mm -hmm. for this piece. They're all eucalyptus pods, but of various sizes. OK. And the larger ones are enameled, the smaller ones not. They're all linked together um, in multiple ways so that they move in relation to each other. Mm. And I'll show you a detail here. Mm -hmm. And you can maybe see some of the links. And so there are many, many links. So it really moves. It conforms to the body. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what that does, the, the piece mm -hmm. has a visual weight to it, but it's very wearable. Mm -hmm. Conforms to the body. And I think it gives, it provides a sensuous feel for the wearer. The wearer yeah. has a real physical connection to that mass of pods. Right. And uh, I like that about it. Uh, so those are my necklaces. And Great. OK, uh, recently I know you've been working more with metal clay and liquid enamels. How do you think those new media have changed your work? Well, um, you know, the liquid enamel I'm doing because I intend to, it's more spontaneous and mm -hmm. painterly. Yes. So yeah. I'm excited about the options for using that and what that'll lead to. The, um, the metal clay um, really expands my repertoire of forms mm -hmm. because it enables me to use forms which don't lend themselves to electroforming as mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. um, things that, are, that have a lot of crevices mm -hmm. in them or are very spiky. Mm -hmm. uh, I can create those forms now with the clay or with the clay slip. Right. 
and it gives me another surface, mm -hmm. uh, which I can enamel or not. Mm -hmm. um, so another element, silver, that I have not had in the pieces before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to seeing some of those in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, thanks very much for being with us today. Thanks for having me on the show. My okay. pleasure. Okay, and thanks for watching Art Now. Our guest has been Melissa Huff, and you can see her art at her website, www.melissahuff.com. We hope you have enjoyed today's show, and we also hope it will inspire you to explore the local art scene and to make your own art now.